on everybody um it's been a couple weeks since we had a video um the this virus and everything going on it's just been uh, really hectic for me and my brother who's behind the camera um trying to get some videos he's a technological guy and i'm not so um anyway it's a nice friday figured i'd uh do another video um i have a lot of people around you know they'll message me and they'll ask me um, they think they have a snake at their house. They want me to come remove it or something. And uh, one of the two biggest uh, misidentified snakes are the corn snake and the copperhead. Um, everybody sees a corn snake and thinks it's a copperhead or sees a copperhead and thinks it's a corn snake. Now to me, they're significantly different um, in so many ways. But I understand that you know if you don't deal with reptiles a lot, um, they can be confusing. So today, we're going to show you the difference between a copperhead and a corn snake. Okay, so what I have here is a copperhead and a corn snake. I'm going to show you both of them. One, the, one of the biggest differences, the most obvious difference, is one of them is venomous and one of them isn't. Um, they're both obviously different species. Um, so there's nothing about them that's scientifically the same except for the fact that they're obviously snakes but they do resemble each other once in a while especially if you're unfamiliar with them so here are some of the things to identify if you find yourself in a situation where you don't know if you have a corn snake or a copperhead I'm gonna pull out the corn snake now now this is a corn snake as you can see they're brown and orange and yellowish um, with a checkered belly which I've always heard is where they got their name from because it looks like Indian corn. Um, obviously, you don't want to handle it and pull it and check it, you know, if you don't know what it is. That would be retarded. So, um, one thing you can know about it is corn snakes have smooth, shiny scales. So, very glossy looking. Um, a corn snake has a rather small head. Um, they come in patterns. Um, this one's kind of got a stripe on it. But if you look at the back end, these blotches of uh, uh, red with black lining is generally what they look like. Um, but they can vary, um, especially in certain uh, regions. In South Carolina, they're far more orange and yellowish. But if you go to places like uh, Florida and Miami, they're a little more pinkish and yellowish. They look a little different. Um, but uh, overall, very, very uh, cool snakes. Uh, they don't get much, I mean, they get bigger than this. They get about five foot, five, and some of them maybe even six. Um, awesome snakes. Uh, these are one of the biggest snakes in the pet trade. A lot of beginners have these kind of snakes. But anyway, let's get to the copperhead now. So this is a corn snake. Take a nice little look at him. Wyatt, come here. Hold that for me. Stand back here. This is a copperhead. I'm going to take him out and show you the difference between the copperhead and the corn snake safely with a hook. Now this is a wild copperhead that we got just for the show. We're going to let him go after this. But um, this is a southern copperhead. Now if you notice, their head is a little more copper colored than the rest of his body, which is why they have the name copperhead. Try not to hold his tail. Now, these guys have keeled scales. They're not shiny, they're rough um, compared to the smooth scales of a corn snake. These guys are also venomous. Their head is that, uh, you know, classic uh, um, triangle shape. Their eyes are a little different than uh, most of the uh, non venomous snakes, too. They are a pit viper. Um, but one of the things you'll see is also the pattern to resemble the leaf litter, similar to a corn snake, but obviously a lot duller, browner, but they do vary in this area. And uh, you have the northerns, which are a little darker. Uh, the southerns tend to be a little lighter. But this is your copperhead, your standard um, southern copperhead. Like I said, notice the scales. They're not shiny. They are very rough. Uh, they have keeled scales compared to the smooth scales of the uh, corn snake. They also, again, have a triangular-shaped head. Um, 
you know, um, now I'm handling this guy with a hook, something you don't want to do unless you have a little bit of training because they can strike and they can bite you. Not necessarily a deadly bite like a lot of people think, but it is a bad bite. And especially if you're allergic to the venom, it could kill you. Um, but these guys are very common, especially in the South. We're here in South Carolina, so they're extremely common here. Extremely common in most of the, uh, most of the Southeast. Um, so that is the classic difference, differences between a corn snake and a copperhead. And I think the biggest thing to learn from this is this. You know, I get a lot of calls from people that will see a snake in their yard. Um, they're not sure what it is. They want me to remove it. They're afraid that it's venomous. I completely understand that. But a lot of the times people are too afraid. The truth is wild snake bites are very, very rare. I mean rare. That's so rare that the majority of people that get bit by a wild snake were somebody that was messing with it they shouldn't have been messing with. The biggest advice I can give you is if you see a snake in the wild, like this guy here, and you don't know what it is, just walk away. Leave it alone. I promise you it's not going to chase you. It's not going to come after you. They just want to get away too. This guy's just chilling here. He doesn't see me as a threat, but they just want to get away too. That's why they curl up. If you get them cornered, then they'll strike. But he has no desire to come get me. There's no resent or evil inside of a snake. It just wants to live and be free. And it sees you as a giant threat. And all it wants to do is get back to his home. Now, see, if, even if I touch him right here, he's going to look at me, kind of a defensive posture. But if I keep messing with him, He's going the other way. He, he does, he's going for this container, actually, to get hopefully on the other side where I can't see him. He doesn't want any part of me. He's not coming after to hurt me, and he's not trying to kill me. Now he's coming towards that way just to get away. Like I said, they fear you just as much as you fear them. So give them, them res the respect they deserve, and the world will go on just fine. I promise you.